Hey everybody, today is Sunday, July 16th, 2023 in sunny San Diego, California, and I'm Captain Perry here with you. If you're new to the channel, behind me here is a scow bow mini cruiser that I'm building. Basically my mission here is to build a strong, trailerable, 14 foot sailboat that's watertight and custom built to cross oceans. Now, as you can see, I'm back in the shop after a nice vacation in Japan. It's nice to get back and be able to get back to work on the boat. Now, just before I left, I finished up painting two cabin sole hatches and I have three more to make, I think. Yes, I have three more to make, but I don't feel like coming back and just getting back into making hatches again. I wanna mix things up a little. And when I get a little burned out on one item, I like to switch it up and do something that I'm interested in like the time I made the swing stove, which you can see in this episode. I really enjoyed that project. So for this week, I at least wanna start a little work on something I've been interested in, which is to make a foil. Now my boat is gonna have a small skeg. I actually don't even know if you can call it a skeg because the definition says it protects the prop and it supports the rudder. And this won't do either of those, so maybe you could call it kind of a vertical stabilizer, but. I'll just call it a skeg. And I want it to have a bit of a foil shape, obviously, so that water passes smoothly around it and goes on to hit the rudder. I'm not too worried about the foil shape, but if you forced me to tell you what profile it's gonna be, I'd say it's most similar to a Naka 8, which is a long and skinny Naka foil. The guide I found for making foils that I was really interested to try out is on the duckworksmagazine.com website. And the article is called Construction of Rudders. This seems like a really cool way to make a rudder or other foil without having to shape wood using a complicated jig and a router or other methods. And hopefully I can introduce you guys to that process in this video. I've already started by cutting out these four pieces of foam. These will define the maximum thickness of my foil. So that's four centimeters in the middle, and then we'll get to five and six with the outer skin. So with that said, let's get to it. Oh, and before I forget, I do have a goal to get to 10,000 subscribers this summer. I don't know how it's gonna work out because I'm only at 7,000 now, but with your help, if you please hit subscribe, I think we can get there. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so to begin with, I've grabbed a couple boards because I know I need to set from the y-axis a 26 degree angle to either board. And that was really easy to figure out using a triangle calculator, which has been so useful. I use that online all the time. But basically I've marked up 80 centimeters on both sides, and then I know that the distance between these has to be uh, 70, let's see, 70.1 centimeters. So I just set that up, and now we're ready to cut some 80 centimeter by 18 centimeter, two pieces of foam. All right, next I'm gonna put these in here. The purpose of this skeg is mainly really just directional stability. And I realize some people may have concerns about strength of this because typically a skeg is going to be made of marine plywood or oak, for example. But when I was discussing with uh, Sven Yervin about building my own keels out of composite, I was expressing concern that it wouldn't be strong enough. But he was saying, hey, fiberglass is stronger than steel. You can look that up. And if you have concerns about the strength, just add more fiberglass. And that's a very simple solution. Um, so this will have plenty of layers of fiberglass to make it very strong. Next step is to add some thickened epoxy in the uh, front of the foil here. And I've got a little piece of foam I'm gonna add in there. So we can have a nice big thick fillet, but not use too much epoxy.
right, so there's my big fillet. And then there's the uh, pieces, four pieces that'll make up the maximum thickness of the foil. And I made this thick in epoxy with half white glass microspheres and half with fumed silica. All right, it's the next day and the leading edge of my foil has cured nicely along with the stringer. And you can see here, I've marked on the foil where the stringer is gonna go. The stringer has to be placed 30% of the way back from the leading edge. And my next step is to take this out of here and scarf the trailing ends of this so that when they come together, they'll meet nicely. All right, now I've moved my foil and I've marked here four centimeters back from the trailing edge and halfway along the edge. And then I'm just gonna scarf it using my sander. Very easy with foam. All right, I've camfered the edges of the stringer a bit and we're gonna do a dry fit. I'm just gonna tape it in place because next we need to heat this up with a heat gun and bend it down. All right, still a bit too wide here. This is supposed to be the widest point. So I've taped the stringer in, and now I'm gonna move the jig pieces to 90 degrees straight up and down and see if we can heat it up and smoosh this in. All right, now we got the two boards perfectly parallel to each other and six centimeters apart, which is this distance. So I'm gonna heat this up and then squeeze it in there and see if we can keep that shape. All right, with some more tinkering and working with the heat gun, I think I've got the shape I want. Up at where the scarf is, I just noticed I need to scarf it a bit more. I think I'll go to here to make these fit right. And so I've got the foil back in the jig and I've added some weights here in the middle so that I can get the center of the leading edge perfectly in the middle there. And next I'm gonna glue this in and glue the trailing edge. All right, the foil is all glued together now. Easy little epoxy job. And I'm glad I'm doing a little foil first because this will be a really good practice for when I make the rudder. All right, let's let this cure.
All right, now we've got a beautiful rounded edge on this. Okay, with my extended fillet tool, I made fillets on the inside, and now we just need to let that cure. Okay, now it's the next day, and I can give you a look at the fillets I did in there. Looking great so far. Next step is to mark where it needs to be cut to fit the curvature of the hull. All right, I'll put some dots on here measuring up using the measurements you can see in the plan right here. And next I just need to connect the dots. All right, I've finished cutting all the fiberglass for the foil, and the side is gonna get two pieces of 1708 on each side, and then the top will get five pieces of 10 ounce cloth. Okay, peel plies on, it's looking great. Wow, that's solid. Heavy. Okay, and the next thing we need to do is cut this to fit the shape of the hole. Check this out up at the forward end. That's seven millimeters over a quarter inch. And it'll get more fiberglass when it gets attached to the hull. All right, now that my foil has been cut to the shape I want, the next step is to fill up the inside with an expanding foam. Now I know the preferred method is to go to Total Paycheck and buy their expanding foam for 60 bucks. But I decided to try out this uh, Loctite type foam for big gaps. Now the Total Paycheck version is a polyurethane expanding foam, and this is also a polyurethane expanding foam. It has a high UV resistance, a little flexibility, high density, uniform cell structure, and it bonds to most materials. And this foam in here will never see any sunlight, never be exposed to any moisture. It's gonna have several coats of uh, fiberglass and epoxy over it. So let's try it out.
Well, I realized too late that this stuff expands a lot more than I thought it would. From the videos I watched, it didn't look like it expanded that much, but it really went over and I had to actually clean up a lot of it as it was expanding. But better to have too much than too little, right? I think if you use this stuff at home, just go halfway up and the foam will take care of the rest. Next, we need to wait for this to cure and then clean it up. Once the boat is flipped, I will fiberglass the bottom, then place this onto a bed of thickened epoxy, just like this. Then after I add fillets, I'll add several layers of fiberglass to attach it. That'll give me a super strong skeg to help keep the boat on course, and it can bear the weight of the aft end of the boat if necessary. If you learned something or enjoyed this, please make sure you hit that like button. As always, if you'd like to support the project, there's links in the description for all this good stuff around me. And if nothing else, please leave a comment and make sure you're subscribed. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Well, now let's make all preparations for getting underway.